Hello traders, Robert here with another FX market update. I am recording this on the Saturday following Thanksgiving. Uh, and because of the holiday, there isn't much to discuss uh, as far as FX market updates. We didn't get a ton of price action. Thanksgiving, of course, was on Thursday, and then very few traders returned to the market on the Friday following the holiday. So we really only had a three-day trading week this past week. And because of that, not a whole lot to go over. My outlook on the US dollar is exactly the same as before, still expecting further weakness. I still think we're developing a, an impulse play to the downside. We're somewhere in wave three, so I'm expecting a bounce for four, and one more push down to complete this medium term impulse on the dollar index. And I'm still watching the same handful of pairs as last time. Uh, nothing really has changed. So instead of having either no video or a short video update this week, I thought we could go over just a quick lesson. So one question that we get here at Parallax very often is, hey, I've, I've done the homework, I've done some study, I, I've learned about technical analysis, and, and I, I like Elliott Wave. For anyone unfamiliar with what we do here at Parallax, one of our favorite methods of market analysis is Elliott Wave Theory. So a lot of times people will get interested and will study a bit of Elliott and they'll come back and say, great, I know the basics, but now what do I do? How do I go out and hunt for the best possible setups? Uh, if I trade currencies, I have eight majors, I have several yen crosses, and I have a handful of other currency crosses and some exotic currencies as well. And if I trade stocks, uh, stocks for example, I have literally thousands of options at my disposal. So how do I get started? What's the best way to filter out all of the noise and all of the... Uh, to, how do I avoid that, that analysis paralysis moment when trying to find a good place to start my Elliott Wave count? So what I thought we could do is open up the stock screener here on TradingView. And I'll just start going through the stocks. Um, I'll just start at A. And I figured why not go through a handful of the, the, the stocks at the top of this list. And I will show you how I like to filter through a, a long list of stocks to look for those best options. So the first thing I do is I like to start on a higher time frame. If I'm, if I'm looking at a chart for the first time, my recommendation would be to start with what we call top-down analysis. And all that means is start on a high time frame, and then as you identify patterns that seem interesting or seem tradable to you, given what you know about Elliott Wave, then we can drill down time frames, for example, from a weekly to a daily, maybe to a four hour. Then we can start to decide exactly where and when we want to enter, if this asset we're looking at is tradable, if it's worth taking a risk on, etc. So let's go through a handful and see what we get. Uh, I shouldn't have a count on any of these. I, I might if, if it's a big, uh, if it's a popular company, but most of these I, I will also be seeing for the first time. So let's just take a look and see what we can find. So this is first off, just A, Agilent. And my first step when looking at any chart for the first time is again start at the high time frame daily weekly ultimately what i try to do is identify what my eyes immediately gravitate towards uh, i i'm of course familiar with the elliott wave patterns so i'm i'm just letting my eyes quickly scan the chart and fall wherever they want to fall and hopefully identify one of those patterns so very quickly, just going over the patterns. And again, if you don't recognize these, then I would encourage you to check out our other videos. We have videos on all of the Elliott Wave basics, including all of the patterns. So for those of us that know a bit of Elliott, we'll, you'll recognize these shapes. So these are the corrective patterns, the zigzag, the flat, and the triangle. So what I'm doing when I look at a chart for the very first time is I'm thinking to myself, okay, does anything jump out at me? Does anything look 
undeniably clear. And for this chart, I see a couple things. So first, my eye is drawn toward this. So again, for those of us that know a bit of Elliott, you would recognize this as a flat pattern. A down, B up, nice sharp impulsive move down. So I think we can reasonably call that a flat pattern. My eyes are also drawn to this shape right here. We have a nice move contained within a parallel structure. Three waves. To me, that looks like a zigzag. So we'll leave that there for now. So what I'd like to do is, that, that's my first step, is I will just see if my eyes are immediately grabbed by something, a particular shape on the chart. And I think for this first one, I see a couple, the flat here and the zigzag here. So that's great, right? But that doesn't really help in terms of immediate trades, right? So how can I use this data to find something actionable? Well, first, again, I would start on this higher time frame and take a look at the shapes that I see. So again, flat here, zigzag here. Can I use these patterns to engineer a wave count that fits? And by that, I mean, if I have a corrective pattern here that I, I recognize a corrective pattern here, what, what might be a good wave count that incorporates these two patterns? Could I, in a sense, reverse engineer the chart, starting with the patterns that my eyes immediately recognize? So let's see. So let's start by labeling this one and two. We'll put the rest of our count somewhere up here. And I think that fits. If this is a wave, if this is a flat pattern that is a corrective wave. This is our first big push up from uh, what was the high pretty soon after going public back in uh, 2000. So for me, I think it's fairly reasonable to assume this sharp push up as our first impulse, our first bullish impulse. And that does fit because immediately after we get our corrective move, our wave two, nice deep correction, atypical for a flat, but not against the rules. And following the wave two, what should we see? A wave three. Well, what do we know about wave three? They should be the sharpest, most, uh, the strongest part of any impulsive sequence. And this entire move here, I think qualifies as a wave three. It's quite sharp. It took price from near the all-time low to a brand new all-time high in terms of percentage gain, you know, thousands of percent. So I think that qualifies as a wave three. Now, could we also incorporate the second pattern that, that our eyes found, this zigzag? Well, I think this fits quite well with what we know about the rules and the guidelines of Elliott Wave. So wave two was a flat correction. If you are familiar with the guideline of alternation, and again, we do have a video on that, uh, so feel free to check out that video on our channel, you'll know that very often in Elliott Wave counting, our corrective waves, our waves four and our waves two, of a developing impulse will often alternate. And by that we mean, in a sense, be the opposite of the other corrective pattern. So if wave two in this case was quite a deep correction, I'm guessing maybe 85, 90% correction of wave one. And wave four, however, is very shallow maybe 23, and we can actually turn on that, that number 23.6. It came up a bit short from the 23.6 correction or the 23.6% Fibonacci level, but it does represent alternation. It, it's a fair representation of alternation because wave two was so deep and wave four alternatively should be quite shallow in which it is. Also the pattern, wave two is a flat pattern that is alternating with wave four as a zigzag pattern. So at this point, I say, okay, I, I identified a couple patterns. I was able to fit them into a, a wave count that makes sense. I was able to incorporate them into the larger structure, the higher degree price action. And I have a count that I think is reasonable. It fits it obeys all the rules and it fits a, a handful of the Elliott Wave guidelines. That's exactly what I want to see. But 
this is on a weekly chart. This isn't exactly actionable for someone who's looking to trade more actively. Trading on the weekly time frame often takes uh, several weeks for a trade to even trigger, and then weeks or possibly even months for a trade to reach your profit. So what we can do is we can use this higher time frame perspective to dive in. Again, remember again, top-down analysis. So we can start high. Now let's dive deeper and take a look at the lower time frame price action and see if perhaps we can identify an actionable trade opportunity on a lower time frame. So let's jump from the weekly down to the uh, four hour chart. So then we can look at just this zigzag pattern. We can isolate just this move here. So now what do we see? Uh, I see a nice ABC move contained very well within parallel lines. They're almost identical in terms of length, in terms of time. Uh, so the, the structure of the pattern fits all of, all of the rules and the guidelines. So uh, that's step one for me. And now up from the lows back on uh, October 30th, I think we have a nice impulsive structure developing. One, two, three, I would, would say wave four is on the way soon. And we should have one more small move up for wave five. This nice gap up here is an excellent uh, sign that we are in uh, wave three price action. We can call this a, an acceleration gap. If you're familiar with Jeff Kennedy's analysis style, he would call this an acceleration gap. Uh, so indicative of impulsive price action, and that, that's what's most important. So what we can do at this point is keep an eye on this chart, on the four hour chart, or four hour time frame, for an impulsive structure, and then a correction. Because at this point, and of course, price action permitting, if we are given a clear impulsive pattern, again, okay, well, let's label this one, two, we'll say three ends at, let's assume wave three ending here at this uh, minor overhead resistance point. Let's say we get a bounce in wave four, and then wave five, makes a new high here. So if we get a clear impulsive structure, so three, four, five, and then some kind of correction, we'll say zigzag, we'll just assume zigzag for now. We can put our invalidation level here, maybe throw some fibs, fibs on. Hopefully this makes it to 61.8, right? Never ignore the guidelines. Those are always very helpful. At this point, I would be very interested in going long on, on this stock here because I have an impulsive structure testing, if not breaking prior highs, followed by a clear corrective structure. Perhaps I enter on the break of this wave B here. Stop at the low of wave C and I can shoot for the next degree wave up. That way I'm not stuck in a trade for weeks or months and I'm trading, you, you can say I'm trading with the wind at my back it, it is probably the best way to say it, right? So I identified a sequence on a very high time frame. Then I drilled down a bit, identified a similar sequence, impulse correction on a much lower degree. And I have an idea of the, the patterns and the price action that I want to see before actually risking my capital, before entering a trade. But again, zooming all the way back out, what did I do? I started with just a, a, a random list of stocks. I pulled one open, a very fresh chart, and I just let my eyes see what they wanted to see. Started by identifying a couple corrective patterns, built a wave count around those corrective patterns, and I double checked that the wave count was sound and made sense, obeyed all the rules, which it did. Afterwards, I zoomed in a bit, top-down analysis style, and tried to identify an area where I believe the corrective price action ended, which I think we can very reasonably say was right here at the bottom of this ABC correction, which is likely a wave four. And from there, 
I counted the lower degree price action, and now I'm tracking the lower degree price action, hoping it develops into something clear. And this is my best guess. And at that point, or at this point in my analysis, it really just is a guess. I'm, I'm guessing, uh, given what the market has shown me, that price will do something like this. And if it does, I'll have an idea of how to trade it. Now, does the market always give us what we want? Uh, usually not. So my best guess is it won't, won't be this clean, but that's okay. What I can do now is create a watch list and add this stock to the watch list and then check it maybe once or twice a week just to see if my analysis is roughly correct. Because even if wave three takes off to the upside um, and, and just blows right through this overhead resistance and then we get our wave four and our wave five, or alternatively, if I'm wrong and wave three stops uh, right here at the high and then we get wave four and wave five stops here, right? A million different things could happen but I'm not too concerned because I, I have a rough idea of what I'm waiting for. Again, impulse followed by a correction. And if I'm happy with the clarity of that correction, then I will decide how aggressive I want to be in my entry and I'll pull the trigger. But that entire process started with me pulling up a chart and letting, and just letting my, my knowledge of the patterns and my eyes just find whatever looks clear to me and then engineer a count around that and then dive in and decide how I might want to tackle an actual trade in the future. So that's really my best, uh, that, that would be my best advice as far as how to start. So again, we can do one more very quickly. Start on the weekly time frame. We'll just go down to the second stock, double A, Alcoa. So again, where do my eyes go? I immediately go to this pattern here. Again, three wave move contained very well within parallel lines. I think a, a zigzag count was reasonable. Nice sharp impulsive move for A, choppy wave B, nice sharp impulsive move for C. And then we get a very clear impulsive move up that did break the previous all time high. So I think it's very reasonable to call this move here an impulse of some kind. I'm guessing maybe one, two, three, four, five. I think that that fits. And so now, if that's correct, then we should be expecting a correction. If this is in fact an impulse, then the correction should be next. So does that fit? And I think it does. So again, after identifying a pattern, could we reverse engineer a count that works? And I think so far this is fitting very nicely. So let's zoom in, top-down analysis, and take a look at what the market is giving us. So we still have a, a move that's contained within this parallel structure. So I think it's reasonable for us to say this is some kind of wave two. And again, if you're familiar with Elliott, you can throw your Fibonacci retracement on there. We reached 50%. That's a fair Fibonacci retracement for wave two. So all in all, this is looking like a wave one developing to the upside, a wave two correction that might be complete. We have reached a, a minimum expectation as far as the Fibonacci retracement. However, 61.8 is another common area. So we may see price action continue down here, but more or less, we have an idea of what to expect for this chart because we started at the very high time frame identified a pattern, then zoomed in and found a count that fits the rules, obeys the guidelines, and looks like it might not be ready uh, tomorrow or on Monday or maybe not even next month, but this is something that perhaps after it bounces would be worth checking out, would be worth diving into maybe even on a lower time frame and looking for a trade. And again, we could go on. There are literally thousands, but I hope that gives you a, a rough idea of how to get started. Uh, I mean, Elliott Wave is an amazing, an amazing way to track price action. And, and often the most difficult part is just getting started. So I would encourage you to put those practices into action, the top-down analysis, getting familiar with the Elliott Wave corrective patterns, 
and then just letting your your eyes scan the charts and, and just see what pops out see what you immediately recognize and try to design a wave count and possibly even a trade plan that that fits that price action so that's all from me this week happy trading guys we'll see you in the next one